morning. Today is the third Sunday after Pentecost. And our service begins on page two of your bulletin with the hymn, There's a Wildness in God's Mercy. Shall we stand up? A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verses 8 to 21. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, who she had born to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to, her, to Abraham, cast out this woman, this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on the account of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the boy 
and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you to. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of the Sheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she she went and sat down opposite, opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bushel. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles? You, Hagar, do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will give you a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Aaron, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. We'll read the Psalm 86, 1 to 10, 16 to 17, and we will read responsibly. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant is proposed to trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord. For you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Not only the soul of the servant, but to you, O Lord, I will of my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ye here, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble, I call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, I shall not honor you, O God, nor anything that you are worse. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, we want the things, and you alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who fear me may see it and be ashamed, because of you, O Lord, I have been and comforted me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Second reading is from the letter of Paul to Romans, chapter 6, 1b to 11. Shall we continue in the sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can you who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. 
Therefore, we may have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, like his, we will certainly be united with him in his resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of the sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
saved us from our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. He says, settle the twelve disciples. A disciple is not a better teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for a disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they, the landlords of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not be unknown. What I say to you in the dark, tell it in the light, and what you hear whispered proclaim from the house tops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not those sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more valued than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Lord Christ.
seen some families today, including the church family. There is so much family feud. Sometimes the very people we love and care about so much are the same ones who hurt us most. In any event, where did the disciples get the courage to stay with Jesus after hearing such grave warnings? Who would accept a job with such serious risk factors? And who would want to work in such a hostile and unsafe environment? The disciples were all good and decent people, but all of them, except John the Divine, were executed because they always spoke the truth boldly, and their messages were hard for people to accept. They usually spoke about the consequences of the, our choices and the lifestyles of the people. And some people cannot handle the truth. And therefore, they kill the messenger to silence their conscience. Sometimes life is not fair. For instance, why do bad things sometimes happen to good people? Why do people who always strive to do what is right and pursue a life of honesty, decency, and integrity sometimes encounter hostility and persecution? I believe it is because there is a constant battle, or call it war, between good and evil. And evil is real. Peter wants us in Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, as to how we should act in the face of evil. He said, Be sober, be watchful. The devil, your adversary, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him firm in your faith. When we watch the daily news on television these days, it seems like evil always triumphs over good. It is very troubling to see how good and decent people are sometimes treated like common criminals. Why wicked and bad people who are always telling lies are hailed as heroes? We must, however, never be deterred or discouraged by these injustices in society because God will always have the last word. We must continue our efforts to pursue spiritual excellence and righteousness, which are more important than temporary physical discomfort. Jesus said, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, Fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. In a novel by John Updike, who was described as a sophisticated infidel, as a guest at a court tea party, this question Why do you go to church? The guest replied, because I'm a coward. I grew up in the church, 
and my parent ghosts are there. And when I die, I want to be buried from the church so that I can join my parents in heaven. Of course, people go to church for a variety of reasons. But no matter what our motivations are, our primary duty is to confront evil wherever we are and correct the wrongs in society and pursue righteousness. Christians are our followers. We are supposed to be leaders. We must therefore strive hard to lead and free those who have been enslaved by the devil. The Bible says that there is joy in heaven over one sinner who repents more than over 99 people who need no repentance. Most preachers would prefer to be safe and so they would much rather preach the love and compassion of Jesus Christ and simple faith but not the hard facts people need to hear to enable them to confront evil and win their spiritual battles. Christ calls on us time and time again to make difficult choices and sacrifices for his sake because as the saying goes, no gain, no gain. Nothing worthwhile in life comes easy. Life can be good if we play by God's rules, by treating others as we would want them to treat us, and by keeping our hopes alive and also by trusting the goodness of God. One day all of us will die of something. But until that day, when we exhale our last breath, we must put our destinies in God's hands. Because as the psalmist said in Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear any evil. Jesus said, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Find on page nine of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of the Almighty. For one being with the Father, through him all things were laid. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came in height from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under the martyr's heart. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
You will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the sin of the heart knows. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us kneel down for the prayers of the people. Let us pray to God, who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all who are affected by the coronavirus, through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they might make wise decisions, Lord, hear us. Doctors, nurses, first responders, medical researchers, and all healthcare workers, that through their skill and insight, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all essential workers whose services help to sustain us and without which we could not function. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may now know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are fearful and anxious about employment, housing, or food security, that they may have their needs met and that all members of society may be supported. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our sick and shutting, especially I'm Stoffel, Ronald and Hope, Victory Pavel, Judith Adams, Judith Davis, Wendell Bangura, Florence Benham, Alice Johnson, Robert John, Dream Marsh, Emmanuel George, Avril George, Ralph Dub, Julian Caesar, Arlene and Matthew McKenzie, Diablo Caesar, Shirley Rudder, Beatrice Briffel, Doreen McKenzie, Lauren McKenzie, Alex Bentick, Beatrice Coker, Kian Kaby, Morris Kaby, Anita Kaby, James Kaby, Chetu Williams, Victor Johnson, and our sons and daughters serving in armed services, especially Michael Highland, Tyrell Crease, James Brittell, Margaret Aladi, and our veterans who have served in the armed services, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We ask your prayers for those who are celebrating their birthday, especially Winston Cole, Terry Bell, Anako, Tajidad, Fadika, June Dove, Simeon Asabro, Lady Murray, Marinda Williams, Monica Sisse, and Kali Biola, for Evelyn and Henry Day, and Leslie and Elmira Wilson, who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all who of whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let 
most lenient with God, we commit the fact that we have sinned against you. In all of our word and deed, what we have done, and what we have left undone, we have done not from you with our whole heart. We have done not love our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may be right in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. A few announcements. First, I wish all fathers happy Father's Day. And secondly, we got correspondence from the bishop. She is not ready to lift these uh, restrictions yet. So it looks like we shall continue with this streaming service for quite some time to come. And therefore, I just want to make an appeal to all parishioners to contribute generously towards the equipment we use for the streaming. And it is most likely that even after the restrictions are lifted, we shall continue to stream our services for the benefit of the sick and shortings. So I urge all parishioners to help to finish buying all the equipment we need for our streaming service. Right now we need a pack of about $2,000. In addition to that, continue to keep up your pledges and also, since we are not here to take a normal offering, send your weekly offering also in the bill to the treasurer um, to help us to continue to keep the church alive. These are the announcements I have. And also to remind our parishioners that every Wednesday we have a prayer session. And we discuss the gospel for Sunday. Then every day at noon, parishioners meet by Zoom for just short prayers. Then on Thursday, we have Bible study at 7 p.m. So our church is closed, but we are still bonded spiritually and emotionally and we continue to do God's work. Okay. Yes. For all electronic and other offerings made during this time of coronavirus, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make your vow to the Most High. Mm -hmm.
continues on page 14 of your book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and every way to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this name to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is you who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and dare as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms over the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you this gifts, sanctified them by the Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and send you in unity, constancy, and peace. And by the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal heaven. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him, and in him and the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now, our Savior Christ has taught you, we are going to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our every bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Jesus, redeemer, redeemer. 
upon the world. Give us your peace. Give us your peace. Your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Give them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feel on him in your hearts by the faith with thanks. Amen. Mm -hmm. 